Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jin and I'm a physical therapist. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and study chapter 13 of the CSCS textbook. Together, this chapter is on administration scoring and interpretation of selected tests. Um, but if this is your first time on my channel, you can go ahead and click on the CSCS lecture playlist. And I have chapters 1 through now 13 lectures uploaded on my playlist. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about parameters of athletic performance, different tests to measure different capacity of athletes, um, whether that's agility, whether that's strength, anaerobic strength, anaerobic power, aerobic capacity. Um, these are tests that you really have to know for the exam and I will go ahead and cover them very thoroughly so you can follow along. And if you have any questions, you can list or a comment down below. So the first measure that we're interested in is max muscular strength and that's low speed strength as opposed to max muscular power which is high speed strength. So with power we're interested in producing the most amount of force in the least amount of time. Um, so if we look at max muscular strength first, we're not too concerned about the speed here. So how much can we bench press? How much can we bench pull, which is shown in the picture here? And how much can we squat? What rep max of those exercises and measures will tell us a lot about the low speed strength of the athlete. So, uh, a good way to follow along with this chapter is to remember what kind of tests can we use to measure a specific parameter. So if we want to measure uh, an athlete's max muscular strength, their low speed strength specifically, what are some of the things that we can have the athlete do? We can have them um, squat for one rep max to see how much low speed strength they have. Right, so moving on to max muscular power, now we're concerned about how fast they can produce that force. So we're looking at one rep max power clean, which is a movement shown in this picture here. Well, this is a snapshot of it, but we can look at how much they can power clean. Uh, we can look at how much vertical jump they have um, because that's going into a squat position and then coming back up um, in a very short amount of time and you want to produce the most amount of force so you can uh, jump uh, as high as possible. So some of the ways that we can do that is a good old fashioned wall and chalk where the athlete holds onto the chalk and then marks it on the wall and we measure the amount of distance um, the athlete traveled vertically or we can use the vertex which is a device that we can use to measure that uh, max muscular power in uh, vertical direction. And we also have the static vertical jump, which is pretty similar to what we just talked about, except you're going from a static position to up. And then we have the reactive strength index, which is shown in the picture here. Um, if you take a look at it, we're looking at jump contraction time, which is measuring the time on the way down and the force on the way down, and then using that force to produce the power in order to jump back up. And then we have the Margarita Kalman test, which is shown in the picture right here. Um, this is a test to measure how fast the athlete can travel a um, certain amount of steps. And if you're more interested to know more about it, you can look that up, but that's just an example of what kind of tests we can use in order to measure power. All right, next we're gonna take a look at how we can measure the athlete's aerobic capacity where they use their oscillator system to produce strength. So we're looking at 300 yard shuttle here, um, and that's a good example of how we can measure the athlete's aerobic capacity. We're gonna go ahead and have the person line up here and then measure the distance between line A and line B. And that's gonna be 25 yards. Now, we're gonna have the person, the athlete, go six times back and forth. So that's one, that's two, and you get the idea. So because it's six round trips, and that's gonna be a total of 12 
um, there and back, it's gonna be 300 yards total, and that's why it's called 300 yard shuttle. So a good way to measure aerobic capacity there. And then next we're gonna look at how can we measure local muscular endurance. Uh, well, there are several ways we can do that. Partial curl up using the mat here. Um, your shoulder blades needs to be off the mat. And we're gonna use the metronome to see how many times the person or our athlete here can come off the mat with their shoulder blades. So that's measuring local muscular endurance. We can also use a push-up test, a very simple way to measure muscular endurance. How many times can the athlete do it in two minutes? And then we can also try the bench press test. 80 pounds is standard for males, and then 35 pounds is standard for females. And we're just testing to see how many times they can bench press those weights. All right, now more ways to measure aerobic capacity here. Um, we can have the athlete run for 1.5 miles and see how long that takes uh, the athlete a good way to measure and track aerobic capacity 12 minute run making the athlete run for 12 minutes on a standardized um, track or a course and seeing how long or how far they can go in 12 minutes there's yo-yo intermittent recovery test which is shown in the diagram here that's a really good way to measure aerobic capacity as well um, because there's external cues as well and um, you can look at the diagram here but this is the starting line and then this is the turning line and then you run all the way through these cones here and you record the last level that they can keep up with and that would be their score other max aerobic tests or sorry this is another aerobic capacity test and it's called max aerobic test um, there's marker cones every 25 meters and the athlete is supposed to increase the speed by one kilometer per hour and of course there's going to be external cues provided for this test as well and they're going to increase the speed every two minutes and the last speed maintained for the last two minutes is what um, is associated with their vo2 max which is the maximum amount of oxygen they can utilize um, at the time so moving on to different agility tests um, here we're measuring a couple things, speed, um, change of direction, um, their ability to sprint, so and their ability to decelerate and accelerate as well. So measuring uh, various things here, kind of put, putting things all together. Um, there's T-test, which is right here. So you're having the person start at cone A, run, and then shuffle to B, shuffle all the way to D, come back, and then uh, jog backwards. Um, so that's the T-test, and then uh, average of two trials, which is pretty standard for these tests here. There's the hexagon test, which is shown right here, hexagon agility test. You're starting here and jumping six times to each side, and then measuring the time there, and it's a double leg hop. Pro agility test, there's two trials as well, and that's shown right here. You start at the starting position, run, turn, run all the way back, and then return back to the center here. And then you have the 505 agility test, which is shown right here. Um, start line, turn, and then go to the finish line. And you measure this or the time um, there. And then we have the speed uh, measuring test, and this is pretty um, vague, actually, sprint test. So have the athlete sprint for 30 meters, for 40 meters, and track their time to see if you can compare that to uh, pre-training, during training, and post-training, or compare it between different athletes. Now there's balance and stability as well. Um, you would expect uh, the athlete to be to have pretty good balance because they need good balance for their sports most likely uh, but this is also a really good way to test out and tease out their deficits where they're weak at what are their weak links do they have any mobility deficits but um, without going um, too far into that discussion there's BESS best balance error scoring system uh, you're having the athlete hold each position for 20 seconds each 
to see if they can hold that and um, measure it that way. And then SEPT, S-E-B-T, star excursion balance test. Um, you have the athlete hold the position with one leg and then reach out um, to different directions here, as you can see, to see um, how far they can go from the center and you're measuring the distance from the center to however far they can reach. Moving on to flexibility tests, there's the sit and reach test, most likely testing the flexibility of your hamstrings, a little bit of calf maybe as well. And then there's the overhead squat um, that tests the flexibility or the mobility, mostly at the hip joint. Um, but just take a note that this assessment is qualitative. And then there's body composition test, a uh, good old skin fold measurement where we use the caliper. And then there's anthropometry where we measure the girth as well. And if you remember from the previous chapter, these are some of the things that we test earlier on. So we go um, test that doesn't require the athlete to move around too much or work um, too much for the lack of better terms. So tests like skin fold measurement, growth measurement, their weight, height. And then you move on to an aerobic capacity test, um, measuring their power, their speed, um, their strength, and then move it, and finally finishing up with some aerobic capacity tests at the end. Uh, briefly, going to talk about statistics before we wrap up um, because it's included in this chapter and it's important to know as well. Uh, descriptive statistics summarizes a large group of data when all the information about the population is known. So that's the most standardized form of statistics. And then when we look at central tendency, there's mean, which is the average of your data. So pretty self-explanatory there, taking the mean or taking the average of all the data. And then there's the median, which is the middlemost score. And then there's mode which is the score that occurs most frequently. Variability, different ways to measure that. There's standard deviation. Um, the smaller the standard deviation, the closer the scores are, the data is. And then there's the range, which is going from essentially the lowest data point to the highest data point to see how much range we have. And then percentile rank essentially means percentages, uh, percentage of test takers scoring below that individual. So if I'm at 85 percentile um, rank, for example, there are uh, 15 people above me and then 85 people below me uh, in that test. And then there's the effect size, which is statistics that can be useful in comparing groups or evaluating training. So. Uh, that is it for this chapter. It's incredibly important to know these tests that are related to their um, parameters that they're measuring. So if I ask what are some of the good ways to measure agility, you should know T-test, hexagon test, pro agility test, and 505 agility test. I hope that helped. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, please leave it down in the comment section down below, and I will see you next week. Thank you.